every doctor, every hospital, every nurse have been notified. Uh, every uh, woman uh, uh, in this country, I think, uh, must be aware that it's most important that they check their medicine cabinet and that they uh, do not uh, t that they do not take this drug. That they turn it in. Every citizen, of course, uh, should be aware of the hazards, and I'm sure they are. While the FDA is most widely known for its regulation of food and drugs within the U.S., often overlooked is how it acts as a barrier between our country and the dangers lurking beyond. This is the story of one of our country's unsung heroes, Dr. Francis Kelsey, who prevented what could have been a terrible drug epidemic in the U.S. and changed American drug regulation forever through her incredible determination and meticulous work with the FDA. This tragic struggle for a safe country began across the globe in Stolberg, Germany, when Hermann Wirtz founded a small pharmaceutical firm named Chemi Grunenthal in 1946. He and his colleagues worked to discover and develop various medicines and drugs, and in 1954, the drug later known as thalidomide was first synthesized. Three years later, the drug was released to the German market under the name Contergen. This drug was marketed as a sedative and sleep-inducing agent. According to the scientists who developed this drug, it had no side effects and was proven safe and effective. This led people to believe that it was okay to take it in large doses. At first, Contragen worked like a charm. It was safe, easy to get, and had no side effects. And so it became one of the most popular drugs on the market. By 1960, thalidomide was being sold throughout the entire world, including Europe, South America, and Canada. Because of its sedative and relieving properties, pregnant women began to take thalidomide as a way to ease their morning sickness. Although a few patients reported tingling in their arms and legs, no other side effects were experienced. However, odd occurrences had began happening much earlier. In the winter of 1956, a woman, an employee of Chemie Grunenthal, gave birth to a baby without ears. German pediatrician Widukin Lenz began to notice the unusual occurrences of many mothers all of a sudden giving birth to babies with phocomelia, a rare deformity in which the hands or feet are attached close to the body and the limbs are underdeveloped or absent. Lenz started to suspect the role of thalidomide in these increasingly frequent cases. He questioned mothers who had given birth to babies who suffered from this condition and if they had taken the drug Contragen during pregnancy. Lenz began to contact colleagues to voice his concerns about thalidomide for he thought that he was onto something big. Meanwhile, Kemi Grunenthal had made an agreement with the American pharmaceutical company William S. Merrill to market and distribute thalidomide in the USA, since it was so popular in Europe. In June 1960, William S. Merrill had taken thalidomide under the new name Kevadon and submitted a new drug application to the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. If the FDA approved this application, then Merrill would be able to release and distribute thalidomide throughout America. The case was assigned to pharmacologist Francis Odom Kelsey, who had joined the FDA only a month before the application was submitted. But Kelsey had a history of investigating drugs and their effects, especially between pregnant mothers and their fetuses. While researching quinine during World War II, she had experimented and learned that drugs could pass through the placental barrier between mother and unborn child easily. 
When Kelsey received the thalidomide case, she had 60 days to review it. If there was any part of the application that she deemed incomplete, then she would inform the company that submitted the application and it would be considered withdrawn. Then it had to be submitted again with adequate information as required by the officer. Each time the application was submitted, the 60-day clock would start again. Uh, we all felt the initial submission uh, was inadequate to show safety. Kelsey also thought that Merrill's clinical reports on Kevadon were more on the nature of testimonials rather than the results of well-designed, well-executed studies. Doubtful of the new drug, Kelsey kept requesting more and more data from Merrill to show its safety and effectiveness. Dr. Joseph Murray, Merrill's representative, got increasingly frustrated with Kelsey, even calling her and paying her several in-person visits to try and make her approve the application. He even went to her superiors, claiming that she was being unreasonable and nitpicking, and that she was delaying the drug's approval unnecessarily. In December of 1960, the British Medical Journal published a letter from a physician who had prescribed the letamide to some of his patients and started to see side effects of painful tingling in people who had taken the drug over long periods of time. Kelsey saw this letter and requested data from Merrill about these side effects. Recalling how quinine had affected adults and fetuses differently, Kelsey wondered what effects the letamide would have if used during pregnancy. She suspected that a drug that could damage nerves in adults could also affect a developing fetus. Over in Europe, doctors were reporting a horrific phenomenon with thousands of babies being born with horrible defects or dying only minutes out of the womb. Windekin Lens confirmed it was caused by thalidomide as all the mothers had reported using thalidomide during the first trimester of pregnancy. After hearing Lenz's findings, German health authorities pulled the drug from the market against the company's wishes. Other countries followed suit. Kemi Grunenthal continued to dispute the findings, but in March 1962, Merrill withdrew its application from the FDA. Kelsey and her colleagues rejoiced that she had prevented a disaster that would have mirrored the one that happened in Europe. But the trouble wasn't over yet. Merrill had distributed more than 2.5 million thalidomide tablets to more than a thousand doctors throughout the United States on what was called an investigational basis. The doctors, in turn, gave thalidomide to nearly 20,000 patients, several hundred of whom were pregnant women. The FDA put out warnings and tried to find out which patients had received the tablets, but not all the doctors kept records to whom they gave the drug out to. This was Merrill's devious way to get thalidomide distributed in the U.S., even though Kelsey had repeatedly rejected their new drug application. Kelsey's triumph led to the passing of the Kefauver harris Amendments on October 10, 1962. All these required that before a drug could be marketed, it had to be shown not only safe, but effective for the purpose or purposes it was proposed for. These amendments, signed into law by President John F. Kennedy, also required the consent for people to participate in clinical studies so that companies like William S. Merrill couldn't take advantage of U.S. citizens again. These amendments strengthened the FDA's control of experimentation on humans and forever changed the way new drugs would be approved and regulated. Although thousands of lives were tragically impacted throughout the world, Dr. Francis Kelsey was rewarded with the highest recognition possible for federal civilian service in 1962 for her great work preventing tragedy in America, and the FDA became one of the world's leading standards for drug and medicine. First appreciation to Dr. Kelsey who spared us this terrible uh, human tragedy which has been visited on uh, families in Germany and uh, to provide uh, both administrative and legislative safeguards to lessen the chance of such action coming in this country again. Also, I think to uh, see if we can assist our other countries in providing effective safeguards for their own citizens because the interrelationship between them and us is very intimate.